So a question you might get at the planning stage in question one is, what are the risks of material mistake? What are the risks that you get something wrong, that they can't get something wrong, and, and, uh, and that's happening in the accounts? Well, it all depends on the inherent risk of the item in the accounts and what controls there are that the client has over that item. So inherent risk is basically how complex is the area, how subjective is the area, has it been subjected to change, is there a lot of change going on, is there a lot of uncertainty around this area, is it susceptible to bias or to fraud or even just to error. So all of those things you have to judge when deciding whether something is a significant risk of material misstatement. And if none of those exist, then there probably is no risk of material misstatement. So let's have a think about this again. Uh, when we're talking about significance, we're talking about size. The bigger it is, the more significant it is. The more probable it is, the more significant it is. So I want you to think about right, how significant is this, the purchase of land? So you go through the inherent risk questions and you say, well, is the purchase of land complex? Probably not. It's just the purchase, the cost price, isn't it? It's an historic factual amount. Is it subjective? Well, depreciation may be subjective, but this is land that doesn't get so it doesn't get depreciated, so no subjectivity. Presumably, not much change going on, not much uncertainty over buying land, and susceptibility to bias or error. And that's told otherwise. Presumably not, and so it's unlikely to be significant, even if it's a big thing, because there's no inherent risk there. So the probability of anything being wrong is very, very small. Compare the significance then of that to purchasing a brand name, so big intangible. Is it complex? Well, it's more complex than buying land, but the actual transaction, probably not that complex. Is it subjective? Definitely, um, because you're going to have to decide on how long to amortize it over. Uh, and a brand name is very unique, isn't it? So that'd be really difficult. Is it subjective to change and uncertainty? Uncertainty over depreciation, yes. And susceptibility, probably susceptibility, because if the company's purchased a brand name, they want that brand to do really well, don't they? Uh, and so they might be, they might be more susceptible to changing certain things like profitability measures and that sort of thing. So that one more likely to be significant, but you've still got to then think, right, hang on, okay, so inherently it's risky, but what about the control risk? Do they, do they make up for that inherent risk? by having good controls. If control information is given in the exam, use it. That is the basic truth of it all, okay? So here's one from the September 22. And it says, look, you're looking for risks of material misstatement, uh, significant risks of material misstatement. And immediately the examiner says, a significant proportion of groceries. So you're thinking, ah, this is probably a significant risk then. So a significant proportion of groceries are perishable. So if they're perishable, what you're thinking about here is, oh, right, okay, so the, the valuation might be wrong. We might have them as, you know, really good quality groceries, but actually they've perished very quickly. Is, you know, so inherently, there is a risk over valuation there. So it's a bit subjective, you know, it's a bit complex, maybe. But then the examiner goes on to tell you that they employ experienced food and product te technology professionals. So that's their control against them. They're, they're perfectly used to dealing with per perishable products. So it's not a significant risk because inherently it is, but they've got controls there to stop it, to make sure they comply with all food safety le legislation. So the examiner is trying to get you to use some control risk and for you to understand that, okay, the control risk overrides the inherent risk, so it's not a significant risk of material misstatement.